folks. Welcome to This Week in History with Mike and Will. I am Mike. He is Mike. And he is Will. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the studio. Uh, excuse the plywood. Uh, the studio is uh, uh, going under res- re- renovations and uh, soon to be finished. Yeah, building a floor. Building a floor. That's pretty cool. Which means currently there's a part of the studio that doesn't have a floor. I mean, there's a floor, but, but it's the next story. The now. next one. Now watch your step. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you are not familiar with the show, uh, welcome. And all that meant nothing to you. Uh, and the show itself is uh, every week we pick out an event from history. Yep. Will goes and researches it, and then he has got one hour to explain that event to me. Yeah. And that's how it goes. Yeah. So, uh, what's this week's event? This week is the 47 Ronin. The 47 Ronin. It the sounds like Ronin. a heck of a movie. It, it, it's several heck of a movie. Is it? Movies. Okay. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's find out. We're going to find out. Uh, I know nothing about Be- it. Before you start, nope. uh, there's one word that I, I had to, to check out, and I, I, I screwed it up. Oh, there okay. it is! There it is! Is it Ronin? I hope it's not Ronin. No, no, no. It's just a... a... I'll explain. Okay. There we go. How about started? that? We're ready to go now. Sorry. <sighs> All right, the 47 Ronin. Yes. So, we're going to start out... 47 with, steps, that's what I'm thinking. 47 steps? Is that a... There's Hitchcock movie. It's not 47. I forget what number it is. It's some of the number of steps. Anyway, go ahead. It's like 29. Maybe. There was a bar called 29 Steps once. It was because it was 29 Steps to get And somehow the Ronin are connected to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Some, somewhat, kind of. Tell, well, me, tell me more, Will. I will explain. So this, our setting is uh, what's called the Genroku era. Genroku. So Genroku. Uh, G-E-N-R-O-K-U space era. Yeah, I have a Roku device for Yeah, it's a TV. Roku. It's, it's like that. So... The way that Japan ha- has their time period set up mm-hmm. is prior to the Meiji Restoration, mm-hmm. which was in, I believe, 1848, mm-hmm. uh, and that's when we really see, like, the modern, like, the, well, not modern, but Imperial Japan, where they really quickly modernized and they kind of did away with, like, the samurai and, and a lot of mm. the older systems. Uh, before that, they would have these eras that were usually based on um, when an emperor ascended the throne. Mm, sure. But sometimes they just they changed them, and it was based on on the the counselors at the time, okay. and they just kind of decided. Uh, sometimes the the names had specific meanings. Sometimes it was a different version of, of numbers and numerical mm. things. So like the not, Wang, like the Wang Dynasty, kind of. So the, it is actually derived from the the Chinese way of naming. Oh, okay. The way they do things, but the Japanese have a completely different style of it. Okay. It's just similar in that oh this is the this era okay. um they don't name it so much after the dynasty as much as they name it after like something representative of the coming emperor or mm. or usually they name it at the beginning of the reign so they don't know necessarily like oh yes this is the golden age because they don't know could that be. it's going to be good it could, could suck crap. so yeah. uh there isn't a i couldn't find like a fixed system that always was this is why they did things because it, it changed depending upon who the counselor was sure yeah um, but the Genroku era started in 1688. It lasted till 1704. Um, okay. And it is known for being really peaceful and tranquil throughout Japan. Um, it's been 100 years since they really had to do much fighting. Uh, there was the Sengoku Jidai, which we talked about at the Battle of Sekigahara, mm. which was this almost apocalyptic battle where almost everybody in Japan was fighting everybody else. It was... Huge. It was every township was involved. Everybody was involved in this war. And after that, the Tokugawa shogunate became a thing. A shogun is the military ruler of Japan. Okay. They technically are less powerful than the emperor. The emperor is technically in charge because okay. he rules through divine authority. Mm, yeah. But the shogun has all the swords. That's yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. Okay. Okay. So it it becomes a an initial like oh yes no we. We serve at the pleasure of the emperor. Sure. But once Tokugawa ends this war, he's like, look how weak the last shogun was. Look how ineffective the emperor has been. This is what we fought for, was to end all of this stuff. We are now the Tokugawa shogunate, and we are running things. Shogunate. Shogunate, yes. So shogun, eight. A-T-E. Okay. Um, but that's just and, a power the, structure? That yes, just the- yes. So the shogun is basically like the high general. Okay. They are the most powerful family, uh, and Tokugawa was the family that 
really like solidified how strong the, the shogunate was. They ruled for 260 years. Ooh. Uh, so basically until the, the Meiji Restoration. At the end of the Sun Goku period, which is when everybody's killing each other, okay. uh, lots of peace. There was not a ton of war while they ruled, so it was actually considered a fairly effective uh, but it was a very oppressive regime where the uh, samurai yeah. <laughs> caste rules and then everybody else does. Well, you can have one or the other, I guess. Pretty much. You can have there's peace. peace, <laughs> but there's there's like a lot of tyranny. Yeah. Um, the emperor at this time was uh, Higashiyama, and he is kind of a figurehead. Okay. He's, he's not a hugely important guy, but he, he's relevant to our story because when you are the emperor, it is expected that your daimyo and your the lords under you pay, like, honor to you they, they pay homage mm. to you uh and you have envoys that go out to meet with all the different le leaders and speak to them and they are supposed to afford your representatives a lot of respect okay you keep uh, saying respect and honor that's also, also money huge oh yes but <laughs> okay. not not for the emperor the emperor doesn't care about that like the emperor is taken care of forever but his agents typically <laughs> Um, although well, the, the imperial throne is less about the money, the shogunate has a lot of issues with that. Mm. Uh, so there's the word that I just used was daimyo. A daimyo is a powerful samurai lord. Okay. They can control everywhere from a, a couple hundred samurai to thousands of them. The, the shogun is technically a daimyo. Uh, it just means like lord, high yeah. lord. Okay. It's, it's very powerful. Um, so all of these guys, th there's a hierarchy to all of Japanese society, especially at this time. Like, nowadays you can still see kind of echoes of it, whereas, you know, there's like the different strata, but you're able yeah. to climb. Back then, you're born to something, you almost always stay there, even more so than in Europe. Um, it's like a caste system, even? Yes, oh, yeah. there's the Eta, who are like mm -hmm. non-people, that's literally like what it means. Mm -hmm. And that's people who handle like uh, dead things. Mm -hmm. It is actors. <laughs> <laughs> They're considered non-people, right. which <laughs> I don't appreciate. Um, it can also be uh, the equivalent of slaves. Uh, I believe geisha are considered eta. But they're they're kind of weird and set set apart okay. because they perform a, a task that people value. Not all geisha were sex workers. A lot of them were like the original concept of the escort. Mm. You paid to okay. spend a night hanging out with them. Sure. They played music. They were brilliant at conversation. Uh, they had different talents. They could mm. dance. Um, so basically an actor. It was an actor, yeah, which is it. Um, but then some of them were famous for being good at sex. Nothing wrong with that. That's nothing great. Good for you. Be, nothing wrong with being good at sex. That's great. Hey, you go ahead. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Uh, but I'm just saying I'm not shaming. Got it. Sex workers as a profession. Mm -hmm. It's the oldest profession. Sure. I think, actually, thieves is the oldest profession. <laughs> they say prostitution's the oldest. I think thief. Give me that. <laughs> okay. Smack you with my rock. Take your rock. Oldest profession. Now I have two rocks. So who will, what will you give me for these two rocks? Sex. Yes! <laughs> See, second profession. Mm. Oldest profession, theft. Second profession, prostitution. There we go. Got it. Although... Theft is less of a, of a profession. You're just taking people's stuff. It's yeah. more of a calling. There you go. <laughs> so we have this fixed caste system. We have the Eta, who are the bottom of the bottom. Uh, there's uh, the, I think it's the Hymen, which is half men. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like uh, just above that, and that's like the merchant class. Okay. <laughs> They're considered also not useful. Uh, they're the peasants. Mm -hmm. And then there's the samurai. Now, the peasants are considered really valuable because everything in Japanese culture at this time runs on rice. Oh. Food. Food is valuable. You don't kill peasants. You don't ruin farmland because then everybody starves. Even the money they have, the koku, is a coin that is based on the amount of rice it takes to feed a family for one year. Oh. So one, koku one koku is that much rice. All right. um, and then everything is based upon that. You, they use a lot of barter system throughout their history. What would they use for money? Do you know, like a gold, gold coin. coin. Right. Uh, but they would also use uh, silver and the other oh, yeah. denominations. But, uh, right. but largely, the koku was the main thing. So you don't usually mess with peasants. Mm -hmm. And then there's the samurai who are above everybody. Now, if you are in a certain caste, you can always punch down on the lower caste. Yep. Except if you're at the bottom. Yes. And if you're the Eta, yeah. 
And but normally people didn't mess with the etta because touching them was considered unclean. Oh. So you're like, eh. <laughs> so it's like a catch twenty two. Yeah, sure. Um, the samurai had very special sets of rules and ways of doing things. Um, there's this word we always hear about bushido. Bushido is the the way of the warrior. Bushi mm. is is like armed soldier. Like bushi is a is a is a warrior. Okay. And then bushido. do is way. So it literally means the warrior way. Okay. And there's a lot of ways people have described it. They think that there's like these five or six or seven specific tenets. It's not specific. Oh. Different time periods, it has like a specific codification. But okay. normally it just means you believe very strongly in honor. Uh, and that that's different in every culture. You know, in some cultures they may be like, oh, stab him in the back. That's totally honorable. But not for them. Yeah. You know, if you're going to fight, you have even numbers. Uh, you let the guy know you're going to fight. You don't stab him in the back. Okay. Uh, there's duty nice. to your lord. Fight nice, kids. Yep. So duty is a huge one. The, the, you're, you <laughs> basically follow your lord like their word is the word of God. That's sure. that's what you do. Selfless service is vital. You have to be willing to die or kill for your master okay. without question. No hesitation. Nah. Um, and you start to mix these concepts together into this sort of uh, almost like a, a death cult. Where samurai don't see themselves as as necessarily living for any purpose other than to kill or die for their master. Mm, okay, right. So it's it's a it's a hard thing to get your your mind around. No, I guess if you want um, a, a purpose in life. Yeah, and so yes, their purpose is to act as a weapon there you go. or in perfect service to their master. Now this yeah. can mean like they could be told you're a scribe now. Okay, and. Some samurai would take that as a huge hit, but they would also be like, but I'm serving my master right. as is required. I would hope the master would pick the ones who they thought. They would pick somebody based <laughs> on, they largely picked based on talent, but sometimes they picked based on spite. Ooh. Uh, you know, I will take you off the battlefield and you're going to be a scribe. Oh. Now, at this time, go we have... Go take notes. Right. We have this culture based on violence. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, the whole caste system is based on violence at least for the samurai like the samurai are even given special uh, like rules um not only can they just kind of treat lesser classes like garbage if any of them could do something they consider dishonorable to mm -hmm. the samurai they can just kill them that's a that's fine that's and, fine and then and then the law will just take the samurai's word for it yeah I mean, largely, like, you have to have an excuse, yeah, and you don't want witnesses, but you can just kill no. peasants, because uh, no samurai is going to just go, oh, well, you killed my peasants, I'm going to kill you now. That's not a thing. Okay. They, they don't, they're like, oh, well, you must have, you must have you're a man of me. honor, you sure. wouldn't just kill this peasant. I I apologize for my peasant behaving mm -hmm. so uh, inappropriately. I am sure that no one abused that privilege. Not at all. Um, they had, <laughs> they had... Kind of a a bunch of strange, well, yeah, definitely strange rituals, okay. ways of doing things that we would consider not okay, uh, based around this concept of the the bushi katagi, which is the warrior temperament. Bushi katagi. Bushi katagi. You walk around knowing you are the boss and ender of life. Yeah. Okay, that's your temperament. But you are not supposed to be. Uh, irrational or overly emotional <laughs> because if you're emotional and you're that skilled play it cool boy yeah but if you're that skilled and that all your life is war and death yeah you're like it's like juggling with a bunch of like explosives you don't do that it's super yeah. risky they know what they can do so it is it's a responsibility of theirs to to do it well but also to have control mm. um, with great power yes yes as they say huge <laughs> responsibility the problem with this, though, is some of them are just psychopathic murderers. Sure. So yeah. we get a couple in, of bad apples in the bunch. Surely. Yes. We get into what's called a uh, uh, suji giri. Suji giri is a uh, crossroad killing. Oh. This is literally samurai would test the temper and quality of their blade by hitting somebody with it. Well, you got to test it somehow. Like without provocation. Mm. Literally at a crossroads, they would do something like, Kit! <laughs> and they'd hit somebody with this sword just to test it. Usually not another samurai. Usually. And this got to be so bad in the, like, the early part of, of this bushy culture that 
they had to put a ban on. Yeah, I would think. Because it was, they're like, yeah, you could do that, but you shouldn't. It's the only real way to and test. like, I got to know if it's good. Well, yeah, you sharp. don't know if the sword's good in battle unless you can use it on a person. And yeah. the only way you can test it on know. a person is to test it on a person. Didn't they have sheep? Yeah, but no, you did. that's not the same. It, it's not going to resist you. It's not going to flail. Hey. Not the same way. Okay. It's, I don't know. What I'm is not, this called? I, uh, uh, Suji Giri. Suji Giri. Suji yeah. Giri. T e s u g or J i g i r i. Suji Giri. That's obviously the Anglicanized sure. version of it. Otherwise, it's a very complex script that I'm right. never gonna learn. I'm sure it's also called. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Stop! <laughs> Why? I don't know how you spell all that. It's yeah. just. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. And then their ability to just kind of kill, they can strike anybody who dishonors them that's of a lower class, is Kirisute Gomen. Which, don't disrespect me. Kill okay. Me. Yeah, all right. Uh, but even they if, you also don't, engaged if you do in, respect me, don't yeah, make They also engaged in head collection. Hmm. When you killed your enemy, if they were a particularly worthy foe, you cleaned the head and mounted it. Oh. They would do that. Uh, they were also sometimes rewarded for collecting the heads of enemy uh, famous warriors and generals, so you carry the head around. Oh. And most samurai uh, wore a top knot, mm -hmm. no. which was like a symbol of respect and honor. Um, and they were carry. the only ones allowed to wear it. Peasants couldn't tie their hair up like that. You could like maybe tie your hair back for the day, but you couldn't wear like the top knot thing. Okay. It's a very specific look. And if you were a peasant that was seen wearing your hair like that, they'd take your head. That was a huge no-no. Okay. So if you at any point were like stepping into what the samurai did and you weren't a samurai you were probably going to die. So it's a very thick system. As long as you did what you were supposed to do, everything was fine. Sure. How do you become a samurai? Did, uh, Birth. You, you're born into that? Born uh, into it. Right. A daimyo can make somebody a samurai. Okay. It's rare. But then you make the family a samurai, you elevate them. Okay. Uh, this can usually take like generations of working towards it, but it's it's... The, the daimyo do reserve the right to do that. It's yeah, yeah. similar to like a knight taking a squire and dubbing him kind yeah. of a thing, but it requires a huge amount of effort and work on everybody's part. And there's a lot of paper involved. There's a lot of bureaucracy in really? Japan mm -hmm. going all the way to the top. And the shogun, I think, has to approve like a new samurai. Ugh, paperwork. It's right. a lot of stuff. But the necessity of samurai, it also depends on the amount of war. If there's more war, you need more samurai. Sure, yeah. So you can make more <laughs> samurai. Right. Uh, they also have a class of, of warriors called the Ashigaru, who are peasant warriors. Mm -hmm. Their job was usually to support the samurai. Before the Sengo Sengoku Jidai, there were not a lot of Ashigaru. There were like five of them. They were, they were not, you're a peasant, go do peasant stuff. If you arm yourself, that's a potential rebellion, mm -hmm. we'll kill you. The only people who should be killing each other and dying are samurai. Yes. You guys are, it, 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 there's, a, this job, all right. there's a pragmatic... You're valuable because you are a farmer. You create food. You keep everybody alive. You have a skill. My skill is murder. <laughs> you do your thing. I'll do my thing. Man. Yeah. But as the war grew on and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, they needed more bodies fighting it. And then uh, we'll talk about this guy eventually, but uh, Oda Nobunaga is very famous for taking Ashigaru peasants and arming them and training them with guns and making a terrifying army. Ooh. And he was just like, yeah, peasants can kill just as well as samurai. And I'm a samurai. Ooh. These guys are terrifying. There we go. So this is a culture that we've built into, is that this is just a thousand years of tradition and warfare and death built upon this, uh, a worship of honor and of duty, of respect uh, going towards your your betters and your lords, uh, but also like an understanding about how everybody fits into society. Okay. If somebody's above you, you are always supposed to show uh, obeyance and obeisance to them. You nod your head. And obeisance. You, obeisance. Obeisance. Yeah. I think that's a thing. Obeisance. Okay. I think I've seen that word before. I feel you made that word up. I might have. All right. Obedience? Obedience, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I've seen obeisance before. Okay. But I think that's like a, a polite, don't, showing a polite. Sure. You, you get okay. you offered an obeisance, it's like you All get right. out of the way. I'm I, you're wrong. I don't know. I'm, I am obese, so. Yeah, it's, yeah. So I, I me. You know, I have obeisance. Yeah, I have obeisance. So I, building up the, uh, uh, I, also funny story, uh, the, the, the wide belt worn by uh, samurai is called an obi. So that's oh. maybe where obeisance Okay. O o o obesity. Obesity. This is your, your waistline up. They invented the word. Uh, 
So that's the era we're in. Yes. Is now we've had all of this war, and now we have these killing machines who don't really have anybody to kill. Ah, the classic historical problem. Yep. And they don't do tournaments like medieval Europe did. Hmm. That's not a thing. If you're drawing your sword, you're killing a guy. Hmm. There's this is not for show. Okay. This is not to brag. You're just you're gonna kill something. But it could be for practice on a peasant. I mean, yeah, you could practice. Um, and then the samurai were also like responsible for killing people. They didn't do the torturing. That was mm -hmm. an Edda's job. Okay. But they were responsible for the torturing, mm. which inclu included crucifixion, uh, burning people alive, uh, and then just your average decapitation. Just your average decapitation. Which is considered the most honorable way to take a life. Oh, okay. You take a head, and you got really good at just taking the head in one strike, <laughs> which is... It sounds really complicated to me. You got bones in there and everything else. So you either have to hit really, so really hit hard right, yeah. or perfectly or a combination of the two. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we get into the ritual suicide of the samurai. There is mm, uh, nice. harakiri and seppuku. Harakiri mm. is the – you. every samurai has three blades on them. They have their katana, which is the two-handed killing sword. You can mm -hmm. use one or two-handed. You have the wakazashi, which Ooh. is the short sword. Short sword, which is with um, the best name. As it has far the as best, I would say. That has the best name, and that is uh, that is considered like the kind of like the spirit of the samurai. Okay. So even uh, if you weren't a, a killing samurai, you like went out in the field to kill, you could have a wakazashi. Yeah, wakazashi. And then there's the tanto, which is a knife. Oh, okay. It's and shaven. Yes. Uh, shaven. Well, I mean, typically, again, scaling these fish. are these are not tools. These yeah. are weapons. Every uh, single one of you. You had knives for other stuff, but you. I think the Tonto you could be a little more utilitarian with if you had to, okay. but you don't use like your sword to chop wood mm. or you chop heads. Chop heads. That's it. Only heads. Um, so traditionally, if you dishonored yourself or, or you wish to die with honor, then, and now dishonoring is it's a whole pile of possible things you can do <laughs> causing okay. offense to somebody who outranks you, losing in combat. Uh, whatever your lord might consider dishonorable behavior. And they literally could just walk up to you and say, do this. Uh, you would take a knee, <laughs> you would draw your wakizashi, you would stab yourself on one side of your stomach and slide the blade across to the other side and disembowel yourself. If you had the strength, you usually did an upward slice as well. Sure. Basically making a cross mm -hmm. on your stomach and bleh, all your stuff fell out. Wow. You only, you only get to practice that once. Yeah, <laughs> you better do a really good job. So that is the concept of uh, harakiri. Now, yep. seppuku is you have a second, a guy mm. behind you, who's usually a close friend, but it also might be a bitter rival or enemy showing respect to you. Because even if you hate somebody, you show respect. Okay. That's a huge thing. No respect. matter how much you do not stoop to petty insults, you show respect. You might kill each other. You might... Sure. Go to war. You might do a lot of things, but but you Damn will maintain it, you your them. face, okay. and maintaining the face, meaning maintaining the, the well, like the kind of the facade, the the dignity of everything, is really important for these guys. So while you have all of these basically like barbaric practices, it's all behind this this veneer <laughs> of of class mm. and elegance that's required. Why do you suppose that is? Is that uh, just a, a way that they can do more awful things? I think that's part of it. Okay. I think there's a, a bit to that where it is, uh, I mean, obviously there's thousands of years of culture building sure. up to yeah. this. Uh, but I think part of it is to say, like, that separates us from the animals. Mm. Animals might have, like, the same exact social hierarchy. Right. They, I mean, they see it in monkeys in, in Japan. They have lots of monkeys there, and they can see... They're a lot like us. They hop around and they, they have a society. Hop they around, have a rules. Like us. And then there's the top monkey and then yeah. the lesser monkeys. And the top monkey beats up those guys and they beat up those guys. And that's how that Let's works. Let's give these monkeys some swords and see what happens. But basically, humans are monkeys with swords. Monkeys right? With, sure. <laughs> like that's, and and they, I think they, to say, well, to separate us from from these beasts who, who gore each other and tear each other and... and, and inflict violence yeah we have to do it with a code of ethics with otherwise we're, we're just as bad as they are yeah come on people yep so be cool 
And that's like every culture, right? Every culture has like this justification of when violence is perfectly acceptable to, yeah. to murder or, or do horrible sometimes things. Sometimes the the god says you gotta yep, do it. Yeah, sometimes. And the samurai typically don't have that. There we go. They typically don't follow. Li- they have beliefs in like the ancestors. There's Shintoism, Confucianism, there's yeah. Buddhism. But largely it's not like a worship of a god. It's a worship of duty, mm. of, of these kinds of okay. lofty aspirations. So... Into all of this culture, you have, have like the culmination of dying with honor is the big thing. So seppuku is your way of dying with honor. And if you have a second, they, they while they watch you do the first knife wound, mm-hmm. sometimes they make you wait and die slowly. How's it going? Or if you have a second who wants to show respect, they take the head after the wound is inflicted so Thanks. that you suffer less. Thanks. And then it's clean. Sure. Right? Even Relatively. though you already, yeah, but yeah. everybody involved. I assume in this, this is more of an outdoor activity. Anyway. <laughs> Sometimes it was done inside, but everything has a, a tatami, a mat mm-hmm. made out of like woven fibers. Yeah, so you could just roll that up and okay. throw it out. Oh, that's then, good. Yeah. Every house has that. Uh-huh. Every everybody. For just so, such a purpose. So that's our culture. That's our background that we're setting this this tale. Great. Up. So we're halfway through, <laughs> and but it's vital that we explain. All of this stuff, right. so that we understand like the magnitude of the events. Are we gonna learn about each of the Ronin? Forty-seven of them. There's forty-seven. We're gonna talk about two, oh, okay. three, three yeah. of them. Yeah, I do have a list of the names. Oh, okay. Like oh, they, they're they're all listed, which is cool. Yeah. All right. Um, again, paper trail. Mm. It's nice. <laughs> so we have all this fa- this fascinating culture. We have uh, the Genroku era of 1688 to 1704. Our story begins in 1701. Ooh, right near the end. Yes. So there are two daimyo, two of these higher lords. There's Asano Takumi no Kami. We're just going to call him Asano. Wait, did you say no Kami? No Kami. Uh, oh, sorry. No Kami Naganori. That's his last. That's his uh, given name. But he's Naganori. Not, he's not a communist. No, he's not. He's no Kami. Uh, Kami is a spirit. Sure. Uh, and he is from the Akko Domain. It's a okay. small fief in western Honshu. Honshu is the main body of Japan. It's the biggest island. Mm, okay. Uh, so it's like, so let's say, well, let's, I'm trying to figure out how to, it's all reversed, right? Mm. <laughs> so if you look at Japan, it kind of has like this, uh, oh, here we go, here we go, there we go. That's Japan. It's kind of a boot-shaped, curvy shape. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the bottom part, on the far west of it, right near the end, that's where this province is just a little guy. Do you want to show it on the map? No, but yeah, <laughs> that's roughly where it is. <laughs> so that's where our, our story takes place is in this this region. Um, and uh, another daimyo, uh, Kane Korichika of the Suwano, uh, that's his region, okay. is pretty close by. Um, they are supposed to organize a reception of an imperial envoy in Edo Castle. Edo Castle, uh, Edo is modern day Tokyo. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the, the seat of power for the shogun. Mm-hmm. And when you are a daimyo, since the shogunate like, started to reassert its power uh, after the, the Sengoku period, what they would do is every daimyo was required to serve in Edo for one year and then go back home for a year and then come back to Edo for a year, and then go back home for a year. Okay. They had to have alternating service, uh, which they are alternating attendance, which was uh, the Sankin Kotai. And that was so I could keep my eye on you mm, yeah. as my daimyo. Now, originally this started as a guy named Hideyoshi would have all of his retainers' families living in residence in his castle. Just, for, just to be nice. Just to say hi. hi. I hope they're That's all okay. Yeah. Or I'll kill them. Thanks. And it worked. It worked. Every samurai followed what they were supposed to do. He did not really deal with much rebellion. Uh, huh. Were they treated nicely, or were they like typically? Yeah, you don't treat you don't treat a hostage like disrespectfully. They, hostages I mean, are totally common. But I mean, were they style. hostages, or were they just like you get to wear silk and kind of hostage? Ni- well, I mean, you get to wear silk and nice clothes. You don't yeah. live in a dungeon. You can wander all over the castle. Mm-hmm. All over the castle. But you may never leave. Yes. it's You can check out any time you like, but you mm-hmm. can never leave. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, sometimes they would go hunting, and they sure. would go and engage in, in nice activities, right. but you always stay Hostage, but nice. And then if you <laughs> left, and then they, you know, well, we got your other kids. Mm. And sometimes they'd separate the families and shuffle them around. Mm. So that was you how... sounded like some mind games yes. going on here. That's how Hideyoshi did things. He was okay. a bit of a tyrant. Sure. Tokugawa kind of did the same thing, but he made it more of a... 
like kind of an accepted more of a polite role thing like it was a it was a representative of of uh, the hostage culture but it was not you have to give me your children it was okay. no you serve here yeah. to show respect to the the shogunate and to the emperor and then you go back to your house but you, you can take your family with you and all this stuff okay. and it be, and also because as as my daimyo you have sworn military service and your men are supposed to be garrisoned with me for a certain period of time. So you bring all your soldiers with you. So it's not like you're isolated in his castle by yourself. All your guys are with you. And then you perform your service, your year of duty. It's like a tour of duty for the military. You work here, and then you go back home, and you do your own thing, okay. and then you just bounce around. Sounds it works in a lot of ways of keeping the military functional mm -hmm. at all times. You always have an active army. Um it's coordinated, it's it's efficient, but it also lets you keep an eye on them, and it also helps you build relationships with these people. Uh, yeah. So it actually works really well. The way Tokugawa does it is very different than the way Hideyoshi did it yeah. with this veiled threat. Sure, so it's same similar concept. Similar concept, but, uh, different reasoning behind <laughs> yeah, it. Okay. He's like, well, since we already have this kind of in play, let's play with that a little and actually use it for good. Like, okay. No, we've got these guys. So so these two daimyo are, are serving in Edo at this time. They've got their retainers with them, and they are given a specific job that they have to welcome these envoys, and that's a huge deal because these guys represent the emperor, who yeah. is as close to God as you can get. Uh, now, this is, is this uh, uh, Tokyo? Is that, is that the, the, the current-day center of power? Is that where? This is where the shogun is. So technically, okay. yes. Okay. But the emperor lives in... Uh, Kyoto. Hmm. So today we have Kyoto and we have Tokyo, yeah, yeah. which are very different. And Kyoto is like the spiritual capital. Back then, Kyoto is considered the capital, hmm. but that's not where the shogun is, so that's not where the power is. Hmm. That's where the emperor sits on his throne. Right. There's lots of ceremony, sure. but it's not really as important. Okay. Edo is like a mighty fortress as well. The Edo Castle is this big fortress, and... That's where all the military is. So at any point, they just take tens of thousands of soldiers and could just crush whatever the problem is. So it's, okay. it's intimidating. Right. Um, but it's also where all of the records are kept and all of this oh. information is kept. And the bureaucracy runs out of this place. And the shogun is there usually. So, there, he does so it, it is the center of power. Yeah, this is the center of power. But it's not the capital. Got it. It's it's the capital. <laughs> Sure. Uh, eventually, it becomes the official capital uh, during the Meiji Restoration when they just move the emperor there, and they're like, "This is where we're just. This is stupid to have like a capital and then a, a real capital. Yeah, we're yeah. just running it here, and also we're naming it Tokyo. We're going to change the name. Mm -hmm. But for now, this is called the Edo period for a reason because sure. everything's run from here. Um, so these guys are kind of waiting around for the for the envoys to show up, and they are given an advisor who's going to teach them. Proper etiquette and how you talk to these fancy pants people. Now, this guy, uh, his name is Kira Kozuke Nosuke Yoshi or Yoshinaga. Okay. Yes. Kira. It's Kira. Just, call him Kira. Okay. K I R A. So much easier. Um, Kira's responsibility is I'm going to come in and I'm going to teach these guys what they're supposed to do and how to do this right. The problem is Kira sees Asano as a country bumpkin. Uh -oh. He is a samurai who has, he's a daimyo who has 300 samurai working for him in a dinky little province that doesn't really mm -hmm. matter, that's far to the west, and he doesn't think much of it. He thinks the other guy is an idiot, but largely the vibe is this guy is a really arrogant, very privileged and very rich, corrupt person because mm, he walks Kira, in Kira, Kira is Kira okay so Kira's level of office it is expected that you give him a gift this gift is usually lots of money right. it's a gift like that it's, it's always it's money. it always fits now it is considered disrespectful for samurai to like d directly handle currency they usually have a guy for that like a, a yeah. higher the higher you are the less you touch the money oh okay that's the real power right like yeah, yeah. oh i don't i don't spend money i have people for that yeah, that's right yeah so they look down on the merchant class like hugely but they need mm, them you gotta use money they gotta use money yeah, okay. but you don't try to tell a samurai how <laughs> you don't like you don't be the rich merchant you're like well you need my money and the samurai's like what did you say to me 
Yikes. I feel like you don't try to sell a samurai anything. No, you just, yeah, you don't. It's a terrible, even like the <laughs> poorest samurai, yeah. like some rich merchants will will dump on a low, weak samurai because now the shoe's on the other foot and I have a position of power and I can, I can treat you like garbage because you don't have anybody to back you up. Uh-huh. But that's still a killing machine that you're disrespecting. So pick your disrespect so, wisely. Yes, really rich merchants pick would find money. Ronin, which is a lordless samurai, and they'd hire them as like bodyguards of uh-huh. soldiers. Because while you are without a leader, you are still a samurai. Okay. But you're considered a ronin, so ronin. it's less honorable. You don't have a, a steady paycheck. Mm-hmm. You don't have a, a fixed home. Yeah, you're it's, like the A team. Yeah, and it's it's rough to be a ronin. Sure. It's, it's rough. It's like, rough to be a ronin because while you are cast wise set yeah. apart from all these people, you now don't have any protection. Yeah. So all the peasants who have ever been mistreated by a samurai, which we've established is a thing, can be like, I can kick the crap out of a ronin because he can't do nothing. Mm. I mean, he could directly he can directly maybe kill could, me, yeah. but he doesn't have an army backing him up. And very few samurai would lay, raise a finger to help a ronin because to, to become a ronin, you usually have to break the rules. You did something disrespectful enough that the, you're, you lose your position, oh. but not huge enough where you're told to kill yourself right. or you should have been allowed to kill yourself but you were denied so you don't get to retrieve okay. your honor and save yourself in this so ronin right. are like a commodity but kind of like a dirty one yeah. a lot of them become killers and yeah. murderers because they're really good at oh, it it is like the a-team it is like the <laughs> a-team it's just like the a-team okay so being a ronin like that's a huge you don't want that. You right? don't want to. You don't but want. You, you don't if want you to are, you might as well be the I mean, best one. We'd probably be like, uh, being a Ronin is not so bad because I'd rather do that than die. I guess. But in their culture, that's considered sure. dishonorable and and death before dishonor every single time. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter. So they have to be careful with this Kira guy because he is so much higher ranking than them socially, and because he's like one of the Shogun's guys, if they insult him, it's like directly insulting the Shogun. Oh. And a shogun can just wipe out your entire province. He just sends 10,000 men and burns everything to the ground and kills everybody. Or he can order you, order you to die. Okay. And you're supposed to kill yourself. You're supposed to. Or, or he'll take care of us. Yeah, if you won't, he will. And yeah. his solution's going to be way worse. Yeah. And there's no honor in it for anybody. Okay. So they got to deal with this guy who's just, he's just a jerk. He's really rude. He's really nasty. He knows he's in an unassailable position. It's like watching somebody be abusive towards a McDonald's employee. Mm. The McDonald's employee cannot fight back. They just have to sit there and take the abuse or they get fired. Yeah. Except if that McDonald's employee would also then be murdered and have their house set on fire. Like, that's the consequences we're talking about, right? So he's just dumping on these guys. He's treating them like trash. Uh, Asano bears it. He just tries to take it. Yeah, okay. Uh, Kanai is less tolerant and is going to kill Kira. He's like, gonna. But his guys take him aside and they distract him and then one of them bribes Kira. <laughs> and Kira's like, good! And leaves Kanai alone from then on. Oh. But then he doubles down on Asano because he's like, your buddy paid me off. Why didn't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Asano just... Now he's dealing with all of this horrible treatment. Yeah. And eventually, publicly, in front of lower-ranking people, Kira says to Asano, you are a country bumpkin, and you have oh, no manners, oh, and you have no idea what you're doing, no. and you're incompetent. Oh, man. Okay. Now, Asano has... Samurai do not tolerate this yeah, from I'm, anybody. I'm you do not ins- for them. Yeah, you do not insult a samurai... <laughs> Even if you're higher ranking, that's sure. kind of dishonorable because you're punching down. You're yeah. you're punching at a samurai who you know can't fight back. No. That's but, low. But that's why I'm doing it. If you did it to a peasant, it's fine. Sure. But you're doing it to a samurai where normally if I insult you and you you can fight me. You can yeah. challenge me to a duel. Ooh, I'd do that. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not going to straight up fight you. No, but, but like, I challenge you to a duel. You challenge me to a duel. And although in samurai culture, you challenge to a duel, somebody's dying. Oh. Oftentimes I, both. Do I get to pick the weapon? Swords is considered the honorable. Okay. 
You could, yeah, I guess you could. Do I will pick a slightly longer sword. <laughs> slightly longer sword. <laughs> That's a thing. The Nodachi is the uh, horse killer. Oh. It's a sword so big it was designed to kill horse and rider in one stroke. Yikes. It's like a six foot blade. It's insane. Wow. But, uh, so yeah. Not, not for in- no. indoor use. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and typically the sword duel was handled in uh, a couple of different ways. There was the Aijitsu duel, which is the classic, like, you've got the sword and the scabbard and you quick cut. Yeah. And it's Over whoever, there. like, it, it was like a quick draw duel from three feet away yeah. with a sword. And nowadays, uh, they actually have guys who are modern day samurai who practice the art, who are descended from samurai. Mm. And I've seen videos of them use that technique in a batter's box against an automated baseball oh, sure, pitching yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah. And they can cut the ball in half yeah, before that. it even gets to them. And it's crazy. And then they sheathe the sword. And it's like, oh, yeah. So if I uh, was standing in front of you, yeah. I'd be very dead. Yeah, okay. There go my baseballs. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so that's that's the kind of like intensity we're dealing with. Yeah. Well, this guy can't challenge Kira to a duel. Yeah. You can't punch up right, right. On, in, on the social ladder. And Kira knows it. <laughs> oh, he, right. Well, Asano snaps. Asano's a younger guy, and he's just had enough. So he pulls out his knife and attacks Kira, Uh-oh. slashes him across the face. Eee. It's not a major wound, mm. but in Edo, to draw your weapon yeah, it seems like a big is deal. super elite. You can't even draw a sword. Okay. Like You can have a sword because it's expected all samurai carry a sword. Mm-hmm. If a samurai does not have a weapon, something is very wrong. Um, so you carry it, yep. but you, but you don't use it, right. which is another test of the thing, right? It's another test of the skill in the Code of Bushido. You are a killer who's constantly armed, do not draw your weapon under any circumstance while you're in the shogun's town. And by castle, we're not talking like a European castle where it's a few hundred people in a big stone building. Yeah. A Japanese castle, especially the shogun's castle, can house tens of thousands of people yeah. at one time. So like These things city. are massive <coughs> complexes. Instead of having high walls, which would just collapse all the time because they have earthquakes, the earthquakes. and tsunamis, mm-hmm. they're... They, basically build a mountain oh. they build a huge pile of earth and then just line it with massive stones and then on top of it they make like smaller walls that are only like as tall as us but they're built on the edge of a sheer cliff oh and then you just have little holes in that to shoot out of okay so yeah you climb up this giant thing and then instead of it just being walk up to the gate and smash it you have to walk up ramp after ramp after ramp in concentric defenses and into kill boxes these things are terrifying you think we have a, a picture of that we have a picture of at least a castle look at that they're really cool um to give an idea of how strong these things are uh, when hiroshima and nagasaki were bombed and the a-bomb dropped yeah. the castle mound was still left nice so even an atom bomb couldn't kill these All things right. So they're strong. They're prepared for the they, future. They are ready. To, you know what? I think someday something big is going to fall out of the sky and smash us in the face. Can we and just... I want my house to last. Okay. Okay. But then, like a the lot of the other didn't. materials, like they have like a lot of paper, like they mm-hmm. have the sliding doors that are yeah. paper. Yeah. And it's because you have so many strong winds and horrible storms that if you make it out of heavy material, it's going to collapse on you and kill you. Oh. This way, if it falls over, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. But because of that, they're like, well, then we got to build a way to have fortresses yeah. that won't fall on us. Giant mound. Got it. it it's like a really clever <laughs> solution yeah. to a problem that, like, Westerners would never, even, they wouldn't even enter the thought. They're like, what? Why? Oh, that's actually really smart. Build and, up. Yeah, funny yeah. enough, later on in history, uh, as guns became more popular in Europe, that's exactly what they started to do is just build giant mounds of dirt and then line them with stone, and then live on top of that. Okay. Same exact concept. So, Kira has been cut in the face. Damn. Asano's like, ah, oh. whoops. Whoops. There ain't no whoops in this. There's no whoops. Yeah. But he was a man who was pushed to a point where it's like, any further dishonor to him would have been just, you, you, you cannot even comprehend. You have pushed me any further, and I have to kill myself. <laughs> and I'm not doing that And today. I'm not doing that, but I'm going to take it out on you. Yeah. So he tries to kill him. He's held back because oh. there's samurai everywhere. And they're like, oh, did I? And he immediately, Kira, is like, he pushes that he wants him punished. He doesn't just want him punished. He wants it to hurt. Ooh. So he demands that Asano 
commit seppuku, which he does. Uh, so on April twenty first, seventeen oh one, Sano kneels, slits open his belly, uh, and has his head Sano, taken. We barely knew. He. Now here's the thing: he also Kira demands that Asano's family is disinherited and ruined. Oh, that they are cast into poverty, and every single one of his three hundred retainers is made ronin. Well, at On least he's not that, taking it hard. I'm confiscating his goods and his land. Okay. All mine now. Sounds fair. So Asano has this very loyal retainer. His name is Oishi Kiranosuke Yoshio. We're going to call him Oishi. Oishi. Yes, Oishi. Now, Oishi's about 50. He's 45, 50. Uh, he was born in uh, April 1659. So uh, he's 42. Sorry, he's 42. Oh, okay. 42 at this time. He... As the chief retainer, is responsible for making sure everything runs day to day, and also is his bodyguard. Uh, he has failed his master oops. by not stopping him. <laughs> okay, that's how he sees it. Sure, I screwed up. Yeah. Well, immediately, and his master's not around to say no, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he and now he's made Ronan, so he has very little he can do. Historically. It becomes his duty to avenge his master for the insults. Okay. But he can't really do anything because Kira is so much more powerful, and the Shogun has placed a ban on it. You're not to seek revenge, which is a huge inconvenience because now he's like, but honor demands I get revenge mm. for my master, but it's super illegal because the Shogun himself said no. Which is like the word of God coming down saying, no. Yeah, okay. All the honor rules don't matter because Shogun said no. <sighs> All right. So he does what he can, and he goes to uh, Akko, which is the his homeland. That's, yep. that's sure. where Asano's family is. And he gets the family out of the, the family castle. Let's He's, go, kids. He says, you're going to be disinherited and ruined. We got to go. We got to get you out of here because if they come to confiscate the goods and the land and you're still here while you're dispossessed, they could get you for trespassing, for being uh, vagrants, and they can just kill you if they wanted to. Yeah. So we need to avoid that. Let's get you out of here. We'll get Let's you someplace. Safe. He gets okay. a whole family out. And by family, we're talking the wife, the kids, the brothers, the sisters, the mother, the father, the cousins, Everybody. the whole clan. Yeah. Is removed. Let's go. And he gets them out there, out of out, out of Akko and to safety, basically. Okay. Well, now he's done his duty. <laughs> okay. But he can't kill the guy who offended him. I still want and to who kill killed him. his master. Yeah. This takes a huge toll on Oishi. <sighs> so he moves out of Akko and he goes to Kyoto, which is the capital. Yep. And. Kira thinks he's going to go there to, like, plead his case maybe to the emperor or plot revenge. So he sends spies after him because Oishi is the top dude. And Kira's paranoid now because he's been a jerk for so long. And he's like, Oishi's a scary guy. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have been a jerk. I might have been a bit of, I might have been, I might have done a bit much. In I might have done a bit much. In retrospect. So he sends spies and possibly assassins to watch him. Mm. If you're sent as a spy, you, you, the thing about being a samurai is you can be sent as a spy and told to do really dishonorable things, but if it's to, for you the further of your lord, you can maybe square that with yourself. Like, go murder this guy in his okay. sleep because yeah. I said so. Yeah. He did tell that me. That was the difference between, like, uh, ninja and samurai is a lot of ninja were samurai. Oh. They just believed that any means to the end oh. is fine. Okay. So they so, were like, well, you said that was dishonorable to do that, but... <laughs> I'm protecting my people and myself. There's no rules. Okay. They just took everything I just one have a, step further. I have a different set of honor. All yeah. Right. Like, honor is I lived and I protected my clan. Okay. I don't care what your opinion is. <laughs> so that was the difference. So he may have actually employed the descendants of the ninja, who were largely, like, wiped out during the Tokugawa days. But he might have employed somebody along those lines. Um, but anyway, he sends the spies to watch Oichi. Okay. And for the next year, Oishi just nosedives. Like, he starts drinking like a fish. Oh, no. Publicly. Oh. Which is not what most samurai do. But yeah. some ronin did start, they, they break. Like, he's, he's dishonored, he's miserable, he can't avenge his master. 
He starts going to brothels. <laughs> And he's still got his loyal buddies following him around trying to keep him out of trouble. It gets so bad, he divorces his wife. She's been with him for 20 years. They're, like, madly in love. And he's like, nope, because I'm just going to be drunk all the time. <laughs> well, so he kind of spares her the indignity of having to deal with his <laughs> drunk ass okay. <laughs> everywhere. After this, he gets so drunk one night, he staggers out in the street and he collapses. People just start laughing at him, walk by, and they know who he is at this point. And this guy from Satsuma, which is a different part of Japan, walks up to him, and he just lays into him. And he's a peasant. This is not a samurai. Uh oh And he says, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your master was killed, and you didn't do anything about it. You're a laughingstock. He kicks him. And then he kicks him in the face. Ooh. Now, for anybody to touch a samurai's face yeah that's like a death sentence that's Should an be. immediate like i get to fight you yeah yeah i mean it, it, it would be a death sentence for a peasant because they can't fight a samurai they don't right. have the skills and they're not allowed to carry weapons but even another samurai if i just start poking your face you can try to kill me for that okay. and it doesn't matter who i am that's a no-no yeah. That is a huge no-no. But since we've but heard about for this, a peasant to do this, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and he takes it. He's just like whatever, man. And then he's like, "Look at you! You're just the most pathetic thing I've ever seen." And he spits in his face. Oh no! Like doing everything to provoke this guy, and the guy's just like, "I want more sake." Oh, and he man. like gets up and he just kind of waddles off to the next bar and continues drinking. And this dude's just like. Your dead master would be ashamed. Sure. I'm glad he's dead because he doesn't have to see this crap. And I'm glad I got to this. kick you in the face. And I kicked the sand. Oh, sorry, I kicked the sand around the face. <laughs> but I feel dirty about it because I. Yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. He, yeah. he didn't even fight back. That's right? a big risk that fellow was taking. That was a huge risk. Because right. he actually thought maybe he'd stoke something in him. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I was just, I was so disgusted. I thought maybe that would shake him out of it. And then. And I just feel worse. Hmm. So he leaves. Okay. And Oishi just continues drinking. <laughs> oh, Oishi. His guys try to basically get him out of this bender and try to focus him. So they buy, they buy him a geisha. They're like, here's just one chick okay. instead of all the women and of like loose. A geisha is a, is a respected position. Sure. Just going to a brothel where there aren't no geisha, where they're just sex workers, that's low. For a samurai. True. A geisha is a... Well, you landed a geisha? Mm, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, you High got a little class. bit of money, it's classy. Like, you, you, you're you paying for skill and, sure. and and quality of character. There's a lot to it. So they, they buy him this girl. And he still goes to all the brothels. Uh, he gets, like, indecently obnoxious in public. Like, running around shouting at people. Yeah. Um, He's going through it, man. It's He's going really through it. bad. Let's see. There was a, a specific thing that he did. <laughs> I uh, Oh, he's obscene. He's described as being obscene. Now, that can be a lot of things. I don't yeah. think he's walking around flashing people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But for a samurai to behave obscenely, that's mm -hmm. wild. They're always so stoic and grim and, yeah. and murderous. And he's loud and he's just like me. Yeah. <laughs> he's being me. Well, he seems to have lost his place. He's just right. he's just lost and ruined. Uh so finally, Kira just is like, okay, well, I'm tired of paying spies to watch this dumb drunk. <laughs> Come on back. So that's now like December of 1703. Okay. So for like a year and a half, almost two years, this has been going on. Yikes. And the second Kira abandons everything, Oishi leaves Kyoto. Okay. And then... The, nope. the, the the few remaining guys who are left to kind of just watch him can't find him anywhere. <laughs> Bye. And this is concerning for them. Like, yeah, but yeah, he's a totally drunk and he's loud and he's, we can't, there's no way that we can't find him. Mm -hmm. But we can't. Where is he? Where'd he go? So they start searching all over and around Kyoto. And then Oishi just shows up in Edo. Hey. Which is far away. Okay. And he arrives. And he goes to a secret location. Okay. And 46 of his friends are waiting for him. Oh, hey, guys. And they knew he was coming? They immediately after 
Asano had been killed, swore an oath that they would not rest until Kira was dead. Mm -hmm. And to distract Kira for this entire time, Oishi disgraced himself publicly, became a drunk, divorced his wife to protect her from what he was going to do, a long and con. draw all of the attention on himself oh, for boy. more than a year, almost two years. He wow. was like just completely mocked. He was kicked in the face and didn't do anything about it. He's a broken man. And just like that, he's back. Back, baby. All right. Meanwhile, his friends have not been idle. One of them wanted to know the layout of Kira's house. Okay. He met the builder and married his daughter. Ooh. Now, he's in charge of looking over the house to make sure it's okay for his father-in-law. Oh. A bunch of new workmen show up. All former samurai under Asano. Hmm. Merchants in town, former Asano samurai. Hmm. They all start circling this house, going in and out, day in and day out, just being just normal happy, dudes. Happy because evening. when they became ronin, they, some of them became tradesmen, they became hmm. monks. They went all over the country. They just scattered and slowly started trickling back into Edo, researching this house, scouting it, getting every single detail, every exit, every window, every tile. Everything. They know where all the secret spots are. They know every person who works there. They have been planning all of this. And Oishi has been somehow, it, his whole thing was just, you guys are going to do this, 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 and this. I'm going to leave. And this lets you plan while I'm off here. It's like Ocean's Eleven. It's Oishi, a, Oishi's yeah. 47. Yes. He gets everything set. And then on January 31st, he splits the team into two groups. Okay. One will approach the front gate. One will approach the rear. His son, who is 16, is with him. Or 15, sorry, is with him as one of his samurai. Uh, they have it all planned out. He gets to the front gate. He has four guys scale the wall. They infiltrate the building. They go to where the porters are, who are all the guys who lift things up and put yep. them down and everything. They tie them up. They move throughout the building, grabbing different members of the staff and ushering them into the side rooms and tie them up and leave them there. Four guys with you bows. You don't want to stay in here for a while. <laughs> a bunch of guys with bows climb onto the roof with one other samurai who stands up and shouts at the top of his lungs, This is a vendetta. Stay in your houses, and nothing will happen to you. Okay. What happens here, this man deserves. He murdered our master, and now we take his head. And all hell breaks loose. <laughs> now Kira knows what's going on. Oh, no. Immediately, a drum starts to bang. The Ronin have this big guy just banging on a drum to signal that the attack is to begin. This guy's been practicing for a year on that drum. Yep, he's been playing. <laughs> he's, he's been busking. <laughs> <laughs> All this time, he didn't know. <laughs> Yikes. Oishi's guys break through the front. His son, uh, I want to get his name right. I want to say Chikara. Chikara uh, scales the rear. They get inside the house, which is it's a big kind of mansion. Yep. And Kira tries to send his men after them. He's got like 40 guys inside. He is not ready. 16 of them are killed almost immediately. 22 more are injured. The Ronin don't lose a single guy. Oh, well. They break into Oishi's room, and he's not there. Okay. He's escaped. Damn it. But they know there's no way in or out. When some of his men try to escape and climb the walls, the archers on the roof are waiting, and they just pick them all off. They kill them. Oop. Samurai were exceptional archers. Originally, that was one of their jobs, was horse archery. They were very skilled at this. Archery yeah, from so a horse. So they kill everybody. They leave the women and children, including his family, okay. alone. Except nice. his eldest son tries to fight, so they wound him. They look all over the house, and they realize Oishi does... He has a secret like exit that leads into a garden and they all break into this garden and Oishi tries to jump him. Well, he's an advisor and he is not a warrior. Okay. So they basically take the weapon out of his hand and shove him to the ground. Okay. And not Oishi, sorry, Kira. Yeah. Kira. So okay. Oishi is a killer. Got it. Oishi is a is a murder machine. This whole time it's been sorry. Kira. There. Kira. Yes, this is the guy they're going after. Sorry, yeah, Kira. Yeah. So Oishi walks in with his guys, and he kneels, and he puts his head down <laughs> because Kira is 
higher ranking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then he takes Respect. out a knife and sets it in front of Kira Ooh. and says, this is your chance to do the right thing and take your own life. <laughs> Or we're going to do it for you. Okay. Ball and then roof. he bows and yep. waits. And Kira just starts crying no. and freaking out and begging. Let me go. Let me go. Spare me. I'll pay you. I'll no, do anything that, seem that you all. guys <laughs> will ask me to do. Just let me go. Okay. And Oishi, I think, probably knew this was going to happen because oh. he just sits back on his heels and he stands up, yeah. he picks up the knife, mm -hmm. and he says, hold him down. Oh. And he walks over and slowly cuts his head off with the knife. Ooh. Not a sword, a knife. Okay. He walks out of the building. He has all of his men extinguish every open flame in the house because he doesn't want there to be a fire that could potentially spread to the neighbors. Sure. This is solely focused on yeah. Kira. Mm -hmm. He lets the family go. He lets everybody who was not involved in the fighting go. Excuse us, pardon me. Sorry. And Sorry for the disturbance. Go. He goes to the Back temple to where Asano is buried. They ritually wash Kira's head and the blade okay. and place it on the grave. There we go. Then they write their wills and hand them to the priests. They give them all of their money and all their material possessions, and they go to the shogun and surrender. Who does? The 47 Ronin. Oh, okay. They send oh. one of the 47, who gets a name, <laughs> Terasaka Kichimon, who is an Ashigaru. So he's not a full samurai. He's like a peasant. Okay. But he was part of the fight. He I gets see. sent to Akko to announce, we have achieved vengeance. We did what we set out to do, and we're sending you to go and tell everybody. You yeah. get to live. Okay. Because you're not going to turn yourself in. They go to the Shogun and turn themselves in. Well, the Shogun's kind of in a pickle. Yeah. I said you can't seek vengeance, but the Code of Bushido demanded you do. Yeah. And you did it with style. And you did it with style. <laughs> and you didn't hurt anybody that didn't have something to do with it. You didn't burn anybody's house down. You okay. didn't cause undue harm. And the the brilliance of waiting that way. Oh, it's a long time. Yeah. I'm so. impressed. <laughs> okay. So I'm he, not even angry. He gives them an out. Mm -hmm. And the only out for a samurai oh. is seppuku. Okay. 46 ronin are ordered to commit suicide, including uh, uh, Chikara, the son. Yeah. And they all do it gladly. Ugh. Oishi and his 45 remaining friends all kill themselves. Now, Terasaka comes back and is pardoned by the Shogun. You get to live, you get to tell the tale, and you're forgiven. Okay. But here's the crazy thing is, the Shogun is so impressed by this show of loyalty and duty and respect and, well, badassery, that he forgives the Asano clan and he restores them. He says the Asano clan, because these retainers showed how, how loyal these samurai are and how good they were at actually being samurai, yeah. they bore these insults, they bore all this, and then they planned it so meticulously so there would be no collateral damage but they still paid honor to their lord. Even though it brought them personally into danger, they didn't care because uh, he's like, there's nothing more samurai than that. I'm impressed. I wish I could be friends with them. Yeah, <laughs> but I got to kill him. Yeah. So he restores uh, the daimyo Asano's brother to the title of daimyo, and they are restored as a clan. He forgives Asano for his crime and says the whole, everybody involved is pardoned. The man from Satsuma who kicked Oishi in the face yeah. hears about this and goes to the grave sobbing and kills himself uh. because he was like, I was so wrong. Yeah. I am so dishonored. Well, by how this. would he know? Right. He had no idea. But he, he ends his life thinking, and he's a peasant, but yeah. he, he does. And yeah. I believe his body was buried nearby. Huh. So he was given some respect. All of the Ronin were given uh, proper funeral rites. They There's were someone to clean all that up. With, yeah, they were treated <laughs> with forty-seven. And bodies. it was like I, the I think the shogun watched the seppuku. Ew. That's a huge deal. Is to ha I mean, first of all, you got to watch people die. That's that's rough to watch. But sure. but if the shogun is looking down on this, watching this happen, that's the ultimate respect. Like mm. that's the highest ranking soldier mm. in the in your world. 
showing you respect and dignity. He bowed after they all died, and it was a huge moment in their culture. Now, since this happened, uh, every year there is a celebration of uh, what the 47 Ronin did. Um, they have created an entire, like, culture behind this. Sure. It's the tu, uh, Chushin Gura. Uh, it is, the, which means the Treasury of Loyal Retainers. And it's any fictionalized account of the 47 Ronin. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of plays about this. There's been movies about it. Um, it is a, a cultural phenomenon back dating back to like the day after it happened. Yeah. People were writing about this. Like, oh my God, did you hear about the 47 Ronin? This is so yeah. cool. Holy crap. But they changed all the names and they said it 200 years earlier because like, oh, this is an attack on the Shogun. This is some other idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, Jim the Daimyo. And uh, they Jim. actually, there were historical precedents that something similar had happened. But they're like, but the Vendetta will use all 47 of these guys. We'll change all the names. And it has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Huh. And that's the tale of uh, the 47 Ronin. The 47 Ronin, a wild story. A I wild know, story. I, I didn't see it coming. Now, originally, I was going to tell you that, that they came up with this plan. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, it would be way cooler if I go, by the way, he was faking it the yeah. whole time. You fooled me. Yeah. Well that done, Ronin. That guy's awesome. I wanted, to, I wanted to take a little literary run with it. Sure, sure. <laughs> Well, yeah, I would have it. liked to have met him, but he's sadly he's, dead. I mean, even if he hadn't died that way, he'd sure. be dead now because this was That's 17. True, a while ago. Oh, three. <laughs> well, thanks, Will. That was an exciting bit of history. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, like it. And, and, and subscribe. You want, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Tell your friends. Get some more people on board If you here. didn't enjoy it. Like and subscribe anyway. That's true as well. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you need any corrections or just want to make a comment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Especially with my pronunciation stuff, sometimes it's hard to get. Sure. We do a lot of different cultures and a lot of different languages. I don't want to res disrespect anybody by getting it wrong. We'll do our best. We all do our best. Uh, tune in uh, next week, uh, and we'll be uh, looking at Lu Bu. Lu Bu, a Chinese warrior this Ooh, time. so just over the water? Yep, we talked about him once before a little when yep. we talked about uh, Dong Zhuo and, and all that stuff. This is this is Dynasty Warriors territory. This is good stuff. All right. Well, that's next week on This Week in History. Yep. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, feel free to support us as well. Yeah. And uh, we'll fun. see you next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.